God has an expectation. God has a plan to see his expectation met. But the generation must come in alignment. And we say yes to Jesus. Ibarasya tabo meka baba kamande kaidatos. We will hold nothing, Jesus. You want the generation, we offer you on. Let the waitings come to an end. But want to trust the Lord as we journey through the year to take our Tuesday meetings as important as our Sunday meetings. So I've been giving instructions that nobody must be casually dressed if you are officiating. That includes all of ushering, all of choir. Everybody must come to church. God is not different on Tuesday and Sunday. So everybody must come fully prepared like a Sunday. So Tuesday preparation must be like Sunday preparation. If we do not in reverence accurately prepare for his coming, then it means that our Tuesday services will not be iconic in the expression because we came thinking we just strolled into the presence. Are you with me? All right. If you have your Bibles, you can. Um, it's a very long series. I don't know how many weeks. But the end is not that we advertise the possession of the concept of working with God. The end is that everyone here will begin to bear the testimony that you work with God. Everyone. That's the end. That's the end. Genesis chapter 5 from verse 19 to 23. Help me Holy Ghost. And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 960 and two years and he died. I would not have started this far up, but I wanted to give you a picture of what um, the records of heaven or what the testimony of heaven was of a generation of patriots. So Jared lived he gave birth then he lived and he what happened to him verse 20 verse 20 I need all the attention here and he and he see let your heart be here let your heart be here if your eye be single it means if your focus is on one thing the Bible says your whole body will be full of light so when God begins to speak one of the ways to fully embody what God is sending which is not just letters he said the words that I speak unto you they are spirit and they are life I'll be in a going way um, that's a lot of banjo during the weekend and that's the theme of the conference spirit and life it's an advertisement into a, the two sides of the speakings of the Christ to his church spirit and life animating and enabling so God essentially does not speak to inform there are weightier things behind information the one who hears is supposed to embody and every time you embody a counsel from God you are made alive unto God according to that counsel so I'll go again Jared lived and then he gave birth so on a certain day he met his wife he proposed to his wife but heaven didn't record it because that proposal did not work anything he had maybe 300 um, pairs of oxen it was not recorded the only things he did 
that made a mark on the mortal realm was that he lived he gave birth and then he continued to live for how many years 960 years were all at 60 and two years were all of his days that's a long time and he died that's all next verse and enoch lived 65 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. So we don't know if this verse suggests that possibly he had been walking with God before. But there was an emphasis on the number of years that he walked with God after he gave birth to his son. Sisters, you see, giving birth can derail you. Are you with me? Oh. I, I still preach here on Tuesday now. Uh, it's, it's like I'm a guest minister. Getting a job can derail you. So, you may have a witness of working with God before she graduated. But we need to know how many more years you're going to work with him after graduation. Kenny went for youth service. After youth service, she worked with God for, we want to believe God that youth service will not put an end to your work with God. There are landmarks in every man's life, landmarks that are potent enough to truncate your work with God. And in the case of Enoch, giving birth was one of them. Because if all that heaven recorded of the other lives that came before Enoch was that they gave birth, it means that giving birth in that time was an iconic thing. It was like owning the whole of Banner Island. Are you getting my point? Huh? Jesus. <laughs> okay. I'm saying that if all that heaven records of everybody that came before you is that they bought a car and after they bought a car or two cars they lived for 300 years and they died it means the only thing that distinguishes people in that your lineage is buying cars it means when you achieve it you can play too and say i found everything that people are looking for if in your lineage everybody gives birth to four children and you have two it means you are, you are worse than your fathers Abi, when you give birth to four now you can have something to show that ah i'm not different from you i have achieved something maybe it's university degrees when you get a master's that's you i've now gotten a master's it may be the end of your work with god they are landmark achievements that can truncate a man's work with God. So the Bible did not give us a picture of when he started working with God, but the Bible made us understand after achieving what everybody achieved. Something they achieved and they only continued to live and they died. He continued working with God and he did that for 300 years. During the space of that season, he was still giving birth to sons, and daughters but his achievements after the order of what gave iconic stature in his time did not truncate his work with god my cry to jesus is that as you begin to add certificates as you begin to have trophies on your walls as you begin to achieve things that give more stature to your humanity may your work with god not be truncated next verse 23 all the days of enoch were 360 and five years and enoch walked with god and he was not for god took him next verse we're out of enoch so Methuselah. 
what I have done is to journey from verse 19 to verse 24 to give us a picture of there's an echo in this thing help me take it up. to give us a picture of um, sorry I'm supposed to be wearing my lenses I, I wear glasses periodically now because my the glare from reading too much on my tab is, is affecting my eye that's why I'm rubbing it that much so during my trip to Abba, I had to to get an optometrist to to do my checkups. My eyes is good, but we need to save it from the glare. When I grow up, I'll buy a Kindle device to, to solve my problem. So, so don't mind my rubbing my eye. I'm not sick. I'm I'm very full of life. Now, we have tried to go through Enoch. And Enoch will form the crux of our labors on this series, Walking with God. Not just because he was gifted more verses of scriptures in this, um, this, this layout of um, the genealogy from Adam to Noah. It was... Um, my, our labor is to ensure that every one of us if time happens to us that by longevity of life and the holding back of the Christ we pass out of this world we have a testimony that is similar to the testimony of Enoch we're going through this series because we perceive that Enoch was not an end he was a pioneer there was a path that hope that he opened up and we we'll establish it more later in the new testament so it's not just a knowledge um giving labor we are doing everyone must be willing to press into the demands that establish a man as one who has a walk with god i know when we close in church tonight only few of us will walk alone going home but even though peace will walk with you we want to be sure that God also walks with you or you walk with God there is the need to carry God into every place and one of the reasons why God cannot come into every place is that the men who go to many places don't walk with him so that's the aim of this teaching and we're going to go gradually um try to attempt two parts i have like nine parts so we'll try to attempt two tonight and then we'll keep going like that all right so we take off help me holy ghost now the life of every man that's how i want to start the life of every man is designed by god to express along many lines and one of the lines by design that our life is supposed to express is that our lives are supposed to give off testimonies if you want testimonials that you, the way you live consciously or subconsciously is supposed to give off a witness that people can hold in their hearts some of us are in our terminal sessions here people like um, Angela right good when you leave there should be a witness in the hearts of us who are still going to be in the Boma show. We don't know if you'll come back to but That Angela was here. And beyond the remembrance along the lines of your name, there should be a testimony. The woman that feared God. The woman that loved God. That, that relentless servant of Jesus where wisdom now calls out is that that witness is not always consciously given even your subconscious activity releases a witness so that you sit in a bus and somebody comes in and mistakenly steps on you and you go are you blind are you blind it's a subconscious thing in, in your normal christian mind i'll be peace you will not say to someone are you blind so you are funny. So you are special. You won't normally want to say it, 
so it was a subconscious release but those who heard you have you know possessed it as a testimonial so somebody comes tomorrow and says please said that jesus will visit this house they say with which mouth did she used to say it that one that she used to abuse me yesterday now it may be that jesus actually gave peace that utterance but you see the manifestation may be short of expression because they cannot relate a leap that releases a cursed word with one that can bring forth a prophetic utterance so subconsciously how we look where we go what we say the associations we keep all of these things and it's a divine design that every man's life beyond the records in heaven is gifted witness in the earth that's the design this these testimonials that our lives give up are designed by god to to impact along many lines to to do many things so they are designed to bring instruction so if angela shows up as the relentless servant of jesus and by the word relentless i mean one who is willing to go beyond obstacles to still get done what has been committed to her one that will serve in pain one that will serve in deprivation i hope i'm defining you or maybe we should put another name inside that one one that will serve whether she's applauded even when she's rebuked she will still serve that testimony is not designed by god to be an end it's supposed to inspire another person onto the relentless service of jesus so that testimonial becomes an instruction for another generation are you getting me now we had men such as john knox who who instead of just praying for men decided to face a whole nation give me scotland or i die now john knox has become to us an instruction that was the witness people like the praying hide some of us are not willing as intercessors to be in everybody's face we just want to do our job whether we are popular or not popular and some people like father nash have inspired us that you can be the fulcrum that drives a ministry and you may not be known unto men so that if you die before the main minister dies the main minister will need to adjust his meetings to accommodate the gap that your exit has created so that a crusade preacher can quickly go and become a church pastor because the power that powers the crusade has died that's what happened between father nash and charles Ziffin. so finney became a church pastor because the one who really ran the crusades the 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 router that released the wi-fi for the crusade had gone to glory so it's an inspiration and that inspiration comes as an instruction are you getting me now these testimonials instruct they give off patterns for others to follow they also give us warnings not to follow so if you have read the god's generals for example you see how they succeeded and how they failed their failures are not designed to be celebrated their failures are supposed to be warnings to us you see a book may never be written in your name and it really doesn't mean that you are not important it means that men just feel it's not necessary to write it when we get to heaven we will know who was important are you with me good but what i'm saying is that our lives whether they are captured in print or captured in the media are designed to be warnings to people so don't live like that you remember that guy so if Emmanuel decides to climb a palm tree, a coconut tree to twist coconut and bring it down and there's no no guard uh, if it's in the village i'm not sure you'll be the first person to open up that way there have been somebody that came before you 
who was bold as you are who attempted it and they can show you the burial ground of the person to say see the first person that passed this way that's where they buried him say the other person can you see that stone that's where he broke his hand and feet and uh, so it becomes an instruction to you it means as we journey we need to pause and think that a man lived oblivious of the impact that his life will have on all that will come after him you see he was not living as a pattern he was living normal are you getting me you know when you want to go out grace there's a way you paint your face okay don't paint your face okay but there's a way you look i be you shall look somehow you when you put this thing on your head you maybe you stood in a mirror do you do that kind of thing to say does it match my clothes okay there's yellow there okay so it will match brown but let me know where green shoe it means it to be off so because you were conscious that you will be at the mercy of the judgment of those who see you are you with me some people don't check those things they just dress for themselves how many people are like that here they just believe if i look good many brothers are like that you see just wear anything i mean if i don't feel bad so that you can go for a wedding and wear a yellow suit and then um maybe a red shirt or a purple shirt and wear and wear red bow tie now i've seen some very nasty wedding pictures i've seen some very, i'm i'm wondering okay, if the husband does not understand does he not see that the wife is wearing one color white why must you be a rainbow behind that beside an angel now it's because that person is not conscious that their lives will be scrutinized by men Enoch was living normally but his life was gifted iconic expression something that we can all learn from if you check scriptures the first man that was acclaimed to work with God was Enoch because I did my study when you come to Genesis chapter 6 you'll find out that one of the tokens of inheritance that Enoch left was the capacity to work with God because Noah showed up and of Noah it was also testified that he walked with God what it means is that everything everybody did before Enoch could not be termed as working with even Adam that the Lord God formed with his hands did not work with God but there are lessons from the testimony of Adam too that if you go beyond your boundaries you will pay for it and those that come after you may be fixed in their existence because you made a blunder that's a lesson from Abraham, from Adam there's a lesson for, from Eve too amongst many things if God tells you to help somebody please be obeying the person because in the communications of God in communities God does not speak to everybody he speaks to some so that they can speak to everybody Moses was the prophet of God because God needed a mouthpiece in the earth how many of us know that so he was speaking as a prophet but because Moses was stammering God now created another prophet called who now was Aaron a prophet of God what did God call Aaron he said Aaron will be your prophet are you with me so Aaron does not hear from God he has become a master in understanding the utterances of a stammerer are you with me so if Moses stands before the children of Israel and begins to speak to them they will say we don't understand we don't understand Aaron can understand stammering they, they grew up together so God will speak to Moses and Moses will speak to Aaron and Aaron will speak on behalf of Moses there's that kind of flow in communities that there are things you will never you will pray for God to tell you he will never tell you he will only tell the one that has placed over you 
you may have a better way of communicating it but you will never be able to glory in downloading it from God we saw that same thing happen with the sons, the children of Issachar there were 200 that were downloaders but all of their brethren had the ability to operate in the councils that they downloaded we saw it in the Pauline ministry as I have received of the Lord so I give unto you so it means it's not everybody in that apostolic community that can receive directly and it's not hierarchy based does your hand hear can your hand hear your leg can hear only your ear can hear but your ear hears for the body the wisdom is there are issues in the body that are not given to everybody to speak about because God will not talk to you about that thing anything you hear is not from God there are people that he speaks to and it is though I know you believe in the priesthood of believers I do too but I'm telling you how heaven operates there are things an angel cannot tell you because it's not giving them to tell you when it comes to the things of the Christ the administrator the distributor is who he shall take of what is mine and he shall show it unto you he's the one that conducts the rehearsal the manifestations of the of the things of the Christ there are things an angel is committed to do but there are things they cannot do so everyone that functions in this kingdom functions with allowances and functions with boundaries everyone everyone let's go back to what i was saying our lives give off testimonials instructions patterns to follow what else do i have warnings not to follow and then templates of divine approval and divine disapproval if you want to bring an offering to the lord for example fame you may need to study the templates advertised by cain and abel that no matter how rich you become if you come into heavy finance by fraud whatever you give will not attract a blessing even if the strongest man of God in the territory blesses you because God accepts men before he accepts what they bring you can't you can't twist God he says silver is mine gold is mine and cattle not on one hill but a thousand hills are mine in case you feel eh, some people's money can be up to that he now just he now makes it open he says the earth is the lord's shut up let's not go along the lines of normal things let's go to the whole thing i own everything so you can't bribe that God with things. He values our persons more than our resources. And so our foundational labor is to be approved of God so that the things that we bring can be approved. Sacrifices will not undo God's approval system. The only thing sacrifices can do, and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm training you to think in scriptures. The only thing sacrifices can do is to provoke and the, move, the sending of an emissary so that the one who is giving will be aided through the protocols that makes for alignment. That's Acts chapter 10. Your arms given and your sacrifices have risen to me. So send for Peter and he will show you the way of salvation because you will not make heaven by giving these things. There's a way I prove of men. So God had to ensure that that one was in. And then maybe when he gave to the poor, he got money. But he could not get the blessing. And the blessing is a person, the Holy Ghost, before he was made right. Immediately he was made right. They did not finish the service. While Peter was speaking, what happened? The Holy Ghost fell upon them and they also began to operate in gifts.
So, those patterns were in Adam and were in Eve. Oh, sorry, in Cain and Abel. I have a lot of scriptures. I don't know if I should go that way because this is one truth I really want us to establish. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. Let's look at a few of this so that we see that there are a lot of patterns in scriptures of people whose lives gave up a testimony. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was, can we read together, was a just man and perfect in his generation and Noah walked with God. That's a testimonial. If we go further, let's look at Jesus. John, in John chapter 1 verse 14, had something to say about Jesus. And the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. He was our neighbor. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, Motu, you have neighbors. So somebody can say, and Motu came to Laute and dwelt in our compound. The rest is, we beheld what? Will it be grace and truth after your master or many things? Because your life is consciously giving off a witness. John chapter 5 verse 34. This was about another person. But I receive not testimony from man, but this thing say I that ye may be saved. Now the testimony of John 35. He was a burning and a shining light and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light that was jesus's testimony of john it means that the life of john could be summarized in one sentence a burning and a shining light acts chapter 9 verse 36 so that the ladies don't feel bad now there was at joppa a certain disciple called tabitha which by interpretation is called docas this woman was full of good works and arms deeds that's given to the poor which she did that's a testimonial something to instruct that if you are a lady here and you are a disciple there is a way to live you must be full of good works and every one young lady amongst us after the order of Dorcas must be given to giving especially to people it's not called arms if it's to your friends especially to people who are less privileged or people who cannot give back to you amen let's look at one more example there are also privileges for people to give off their own testimonial because you can be privileged to read so in second timothy chapter 4 verse 7 a very much loved verse paul gave off his own testimony i have fought a good fight i have finished my course i have kept the faith in paul's case it seems to me as though when we are about stepping out we are all given the privilege to read have you seen somebody die before i mean not like the person died you now came the person died when you were there how many of us have seen that before okay i've seen a couple of times a couple of times people don't die the same way it's as though everybody sees where they are going when they're about to die you know that song a little long that they call it. and then what's the what's the what do they call that thing now? The ad lib. You see, that song is very true. In the afterlife, nobody goes to another person's house. Everybody goes to their own home. And Jibola, I perceive with the few I have seen that everybody knows his house. You see, please, you walk in the hospital. Or you will walk in the hospital. You will walk, you will walk. I've seen people die struggling. As though it was something came to take them. And they are like, ah, I can't go with you. 
they are struggling like trying to stay and i've seen people die at least there's one that were trying to pray for that person to stay and the person held my hand like you want to lay hands and the person took my hand like Kai, don't don't pray for me uh, why would i stay here when there is better than here and the person went peacefully I've seen people die peacefully. They know that ah, you be that you be by law. I've seen people begin to sing songs. One of them began to sing. The songs were not even in English. It was not like it. You can't even call it a chant because it was not repeated. But it was like the person was hearing a sound and then began to hum that song. It's a song I don't know till today. It means the person was already hearing songs. I'm sorry I'm bringing death into this meeting but you see you, if Jesus tarries all of us will go through that passage but whether consciously or unconsciously I want you to start living today knowing that you will leave a testimonial in the hearts of men so that when the pastor comes and says he was a good man nobody was the neighbors will not say oh <laughs> good man hey. so, yes because in church the person was good but in, in that house area is good radiance of bad rubbish you see the way i qualified it it's not just rubbish it's bad rubbish so the bible is littered permit me to use that word with a lot of people whose lives gave off testimonials and the bible gave us the privilege to hear the testimonials enoch walked with god and was not for god took him it is in this shape of many testimonials that enoch becomes a subject of interest to instruct to show us a pattern of divine approval or disapproval to warn us that if his end is our desired end there is a way that we should live if you go to genesis chapter 5 now i'm almost rounding up my first part enoch you find out that enoch was not the subject of genesis chapter 5. how many of us saw that because Genesis chapter 5 was given to us as a prelude to Genesis chapter 6. It was about Noah. Noah was about to build something natural. To construct something that could survive the wrath of God. If there was no Genesis chapter 5, Noah would have looked like a God. We would have felt that, ah, you built an ark out of wood and then rain fell from heaven the flood was not just because rain fell the bible says all the fountains of the deep were unlocked they claim that the fountains of the deep are seven water layers under the ground they removed all their gates and said release water on the earth so it was a combination are you with me and but he built something that survived he will have been he will have been like adam there will have been an altar somewhere this altar is built onto onto noah so the bible decided to paint in very clear pictures his john the journey of his humanity it's a pattern i see repeated in scriptures many times when you see genealogies is to de deify men just like jesus if you claim ah, jesus was was sinless because he was a he was a god one it would be a strange spirit saying that because one of the test of spirits is that any spirit that does not agree that jesus came in the flesh is not of god so you have in that matthew chapter one yes and then you have luke chapter is it one or two now Help me check. Is it Luke 1 or Luke 2? 
help me, help me, help me. But I'm sure of Matthew chapter one. Is it Luke one or Luke two? Check your Bible. Check your Bible. What's in Luke two? Is it Luke one or two? There's a genealogy. Luke three. Okay, but Matthew is one. Good. So in Luke three and in Matthew chapter one, what you see is a layout. And what this this genealogy um, is supposed to do is to make us understand the humanity of those that are about to be introduced. What's your name, sir? David. So, if my brother David says, I can't walk with God because Enoch was a special one, we'll be reminded that Enoch was did not drop from heaven. He didn't come as an angel. Enoch was given back to by Jared. And like Elijah, Enoch was a man of like passions. He liked a woman. He married a woman. He slept with the woman. He watched his wife get pregnant. He didn't give back to children after one day. The baby stayed nine months. Right? He had options as to what to do. But he chose to work with God. And as he was working with God, it was not like he was a hermit. A hermit is like they are, like these ancient monks who just stay in the woods where they don't interact with civilization. He was still interacting with a woman in the house. The woman was still giving birth to sons and daughters. Come on. It's not every day they sleep with people that they get pregnant. So he had a robust relationship with his wife that did not break his work with God. He fathered children. He disciplined them. He shouted at them. He taught them a devotion. Maybe he sent them to school. It means he, he hustled for money. He fed a family. A family that continued enlarging. Are you with me? Because he didn't stop at Methuselah. Now let me have one child so that I can have time for God. He continued doing his human things and he was still giving birth. And, and he was still working with God. So you are beyond the excuse. The average university student says, I'm in school. So you don't know what it means to combine academics and God. Bro, I studied chemical engineering. How many chemical people are here? Okay, that's what you are studying to. What level? Oh no, you are not in chemical engineering. You are, in, you are in, you are in, you are still in physics or chemistry. That's what you do at that level. Mass uh, 111, mechanics, um, separation techniques. It's still basic chemistry you are doing. And you have not studied any theorems, sir. Huh? When you study one that, after downloading it, you will cost the person that invented it. Ah, 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 did, were you not supposed to solve a problem? Why do I have to cram these things? Because you don't know them. You cram them. That's the only way. Oh. No, it's not. You, uh, if you go by the way of knowledge, you may not pass well. Though. There are things that you just cram. So if you are used to cramming scriptures when you were small, that's why the average afar passes exams it's not knowledge he just he's, he's just he just dumps because from when he was small when he came back from school he didn't play football he went to a school to study a book that he does not first learn by understanding he learns the book by cramming are you with me those things are those things are Judaistic things. So that's how Jews do too. The first five books of the Bible that make up the Torah, you don't approach the Torah to understand. You approach the Torah to cram, and you have your first thirty years to do that. Else, if you become a thirty-year-old, you will not be called a man, and nobody will give their daughter to you if you have not learned the Torah by memory. You know why families are crashing and things are starting? People who don't know the God who is supposed to be head of the home are going to ask people to marry them. Don't worry, I'm not going to bring those rules. That you must know, 
but but there is a basic spirit there is a basic measure of spiritual knowledge that is required to run a home and we need to tell ourselves the truth a basic measure there are certain names of god and i don't just mean nomenclature i mean characteristics authority levels in god that every man who wants to marry a woman must have don't believe me marry just marry there are two ways to survive you have learned before or you enter and then you go to school and then you have like 15 rough years that even when you eventually know the the fractures on that marriage will be so many it will be scarred and there will be scars of ignorance it's the same in ministry too every ministry will need money and if you have not known god the provider you will compromise it's just time one year two years when you find out that god is still speaking about what to do but the finance is not there you will you will steal and you will steal for good reasons you know you can be sincerely wrong but it's not that i want to buy a car it's the work of god and there are scriptures that you can manipulate to support you that god works in diverse ways hmm? it will give you a good platform to to steal from to die all souls are mine so if i'm manipulating them still for god and it will be because you have not known him the provider i went out this morning and a woman was speaking to me and somebody just moved the woman was selling corn so we just got talking i was just passing and i don't know how she knew me but she greeted me ah daddy ah so and it was an elderly woman so i quickly prostrated bow lord i said god is helping us your own side too of course you should be asking people now i said your own side didn't come ah she said she that she's fine oh. her rule is if she doesn't have anything and she's anybody that has you have tomato there that that's how she used to live that she's not afraid to take tomato or onions from anybody she said so that this new couple that just moved in they have a child about three years old and the child didn't go to school this morning the child was crying and then the mother came out crying too she now called the mother what's the problem that they have food stuff they have rice and beans but there was no no pepper no no stew and so the child so they had to put was it red oil or something into the rice and the young child refused to eat the rice even though the child was hungry so he started crying she now said ah and there are people in this house and you are suffering are you people that proud you are not crying is it wrong to knock somebody's door in today's nigeria and say see i have rice you have stew uh, okay oh. that's not wrong oh. that she told them even if it's our last two we are not eating the stew this morning that there's hope many things can happen during the day that's so she can scrape i was i was um, it was victor pastor victor that drove me from oshobo to ondo that's for peter and us meeting we're there together and while we're going on the way we saw this man packing sand into the holes on the road you know the portals so when we almost got there and i opened my purse to give them some money in lagos they still spend old note I hear in Ubuntu, so they are doing like this. Don't worry, it's just, it will soon be time. Uh, so, I now pulled out a two hundred naira note, and this is my rationale: two things. One is that if these people took, if it was gone, they were carrying and not bucket, and they say we should bring our money. We'll give them money. Now they are carrying bucket, and they are helping our tires, and we are driving like they are invisible. I now said two. Because he was his point was if you have a few notes, you don't have many, so it's better to use them for the worthwhile things. I said, the enemy in this season will make a lot of people miss out on their mercy. Because prayer essentially is not the gate of mercy, it's being merciful. So everybody will stop showing mercy because what they have, they claim it is not enough, and they'll be blocking greater mercies so giving in this season is not because you have plenty it's because you have and that's the only way to have more 
so i've given many times to the last i'll tell my wife ah we need to be sensible but this is a need we still meet it until almost there's nothing because it's the only way to get mercy how did i get here the money monica okay people let you like story don't worry that's why i have someone note that's why i have someone note. i can find myself okay so I, I was talking about that genealogy that some people do great things mighty works great exploits and there is in the day that their exploits are now designed to be replicated a succeeding generation can stand away from their exploits with the excuse that they did it in superhuman existence so jesus's birth was shown to us that it was a human being that gave birth to him if you didn't see paul before acts chapter 9 you will have felt that paul was an angel with the weight of his revelation so they showed us that he was not even an adherent he was against us if you didn't see peter in the day that he that he he denied jesus in the day that he rebuked jesus in the day that um he he had to fearfully wake jesus up or in the day that he sank when you see peter at pentecost you will think it was an angel that came accompanying the coming of the holy ghost can you whisper to your neighbor tell them the demands of god come to us in spite of our humanity i want you to say that that the demands of god still put it this way the demands of god still come to us be, though in sorry in spite of our humanity what that means is that god knows that you are human but he still places demands on you and it's comfortable to do that because he has backtested his demands on human beings who came before you and they delivered there is no excuse so if you claim you are a student there are students who have worked with god through school and are still working if you claim i'm the eldest in our home oh, there are many firstborns who have been working with god say i'm the first person in our village to come to school is it the whole village that contributed money for me to come so it's my book nothing about god it's not your village that will first contribute money as a matter of fact your village contributed money because they heard that in another village they contributed money there is nothing new under the sun people have worked with god in hunger people have worked with god in abundance people have worked with god wearing only one white shoe May God, okay, you put in his Apostle Romans new sermons. You people used to hear uh, when he started preaching, he didn't even have suit, he used to wear monkey jacket. If you look at those old pictures, he was still spitting fire at that time. Dr. Paul Leneche, his first ministry shoe was his elder brother's army boot. Uh, so, all of you used to see how he used to dazzle his shoe and with his long mafian suits, and you say, Kai. And we back on low or ministry. No, it was in a shop they were living in Abuja. Both doctors. So they didn't they didn't jump into they didn't start ministry in the dome. Are you with me? Uh, and that military boot, imagine wearing red suit, red trouser, you know, all this red monkey jacket. You know now this red waistcoat with shirt and tie. You now put army boot. He told us that they don't even have money for polish. So it's the anointing oil they used to paint the shoe. You can try it, it will shine. Uh, so when you see Debra wear those her those are very wicked boots and hair. They've been wearing boots in that house for long. People became beautiful because they walked with God. 
it means you can start anywhere but there is a similar end for everybody that goes on that common path there's a similar end because God is no respecter of persons he places this demand on poor men he places this demand on rich men because he knows that wealth is not an advantage working with God he places it on the intelligent he places it on the less intelligent are you getting my point he places it on those who come from first world nations he places it on those who come from developing nations like Nigeria is the same demand because he knows that the shape of your nation does not have any advantage that life is better in America doesn't mean that they would be of advantage in working with God the realm into which you have been called to work does not find advancement along the lines of these many things that we see around here I'm an A student I'm an F student you know there are F students too when they have one E they thank Jesus ah! you know here and F are close Abina it's just one line See, they added one line this time ah! God they are faithful if they have an A you think it's first class they have I'm saying even if you're an F student the F is not supposed to be able to affect working with God because in the realm into which you are called to work with him to do these exploits they don't rate people along the lines of E and F there they don't study Jacobian theorem there they have their own rules and those rules can be observed by people from all shapes of life is it will work for a master to work for a slave so joseph will be righteous as a prime minister but he will also be righteous in in potiphar's house as a slave he will also be righteous in the prison he will be the cell leader in prison but he will still be righteous there are you getting my point genealogies are to make us know that the demands of god are not new men have obeyed them and so we are without excuse so it was basically about noah but so that noah will be gifted a human line of emergence the bible began to give us a picture of all of those who came before him and everybody was defined along the same lines until we got to this strange man called enoch God has an expectation. God has a plan to see his expectation met. But a generation must come in alignment. And we say yes to Jesus. Ibarasia Tabo, Meka Baba, Kamande Kaidatos. We will hold nothing, Jesus. You want a generation, we offer you one. Let the waitings come to an end.